How you doing? What is up? Welcome back to another episode of our Pro E36 drift car build. Today we're doing engine stuff. I've been very excited about this for a long time, but I had to exercise patience whilst we did other important things. But we are now here and we are ready. Look how filthy this thing is. As you can see, the engine is exactly as it was when we pulled it out of our old shell. So she is fairly dirty. Absolutely covered in gunk. The drive belt has seen better days. Lots of, wow, like just crap everywhere. But I do have to say this motor still runs absolutely beautiful. So for anyone wondering, this thing has ARP head studs and a cut ring head gasket. I hella called the block because it is the alloy block. I literally just hand drilled it, wound the hella calls in. You guys can go check out that video, it's on my channel. But this motor runs about 13 PSI of boost. I think it makes about 270 kilowatts of power. It's somewhere around the 350 horsepower mark. We absolutely bang this thing off limiter all day long at events and it, honestly, it hasn't missed a beat. So massive shout out to this motor. And we're gonna be putting it straight back in the car. As I've said previously, we do have like a built motor in, on the shelf in the back. It's not actually built, we need to put it together. But I'm not gonna rush that, I wanna do that properly. So we'll do that in the coming months together. But this motor runs, so why would you change something that isn't actually broken? But it's gunky. So what we're gonna do right now, we're gonna clean the hell out of this thing. We're gonna pull the rocker cover off and we're spraying the rocker cover a beautiful, beautiful colour. A colour that you guys will find out a little bit later in the video. But we basically want to give this thing a whole refresh. And while we're here, we're going to refresh and just make better our Mission Motor radiator and our eBay intercooler. And just make sure everything's looking absolutely beautiful before we put it back into our painted, nice, white engine bay. We're also painting our GMF Fab uh, turbo manifold. So this is going to go matte black as well. As you can see, it's had a rough life with a lot of oil and stuff going all over it. And uh, that basically just makes it look like crap. So we're gonna make it look all nice again. So my aim is to have this looking all beautifully fresh, that matte black, this painted a beautiful color, and then our TSG slash Burnouts Unlimited valve cover, oh sorry, coil pack cover going on the top. Look at this one, this one's done me so well. I've had it for about three and a half years. So good, but we're obviously gonna replace it with a nice shiny new one. So. Without further ado, you guys are going on the tripod and let's blast this thing down. So first pass, it's definitely a lot cleaner. I'm gonna get it way cleaner than this, but for now, this will do while I pull some stuff off. Uh, so we're gonna pull the intake manifold off uh, so I can clean under there a bit easier. And then we'll pull the valve cover off um, after that, once I do my second pass. And then we're going to paint strip this thing because we're painting it, which I'm friggin' pumped about, but I need to strip all this crap off it. Look at that. It's melted from one of our many fires that we had when we were trying to get the turbo set up on this car. Reliable. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna do one more pass, but I won't do it on camera. You guys, you guys don't need to watch me freaking clean an engine. So we'll do the quick YouTube magic, and she'll be clean, and the valve cover will be off, and we can go to town on it. Oh, quickly before we do that. This stuff came up like pretty nice. That's pretty good. The radiator came up super clean, which I'm pumped about. So that's cool. But yeah, YouTube magic, let's go. Woo! Love that. So that's this head. Still the cleanest head I've ever had. This thing still looks so good on the inside, which I am over the moon about, because I didn't want to take the cover off and find that it was cactus, so happy days. Also, when we take this cover off, one of the hilarious things about this motor, so we've got the ARP head studs in this motor with the hella coils, but we lost one when we built it, remember? So this head stud right here is one of the stock head studs that we reused, and she's held up beautifully, so. 13 ARP head studs and one stock torqued to yield head bolt that we'd already reused probably a multiple times is the recipe to success apparently. So before we do the valve cover, I'm going to do the turbo manifold uh, and let it sit overnight. So I use this heat stuff here, use it on the Fevo. It's really, really good. Um, Dupe the color, test it up to 1093 degrees Celsius. High heat with ceramic, but uh, seems to be awesome. Very happy with it. So gonna go ahead. My mate Cam Martin said that I need to heat this up and then paint it. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Well, that 
turned out about 69 times better than I expected. Look at that. She looks absolutely beautiful. Looks beautiful. Very happy. That's one job ticked off the list. Valve cover. It's your turn, buddy. So first thing we've got to do with this bad boy, paint stripper. Brush. Let's get this done. Hopefully it works. I've used paint stripper before and didn't really work super well, but I got this from the paint shop, so fingers crossed this does the job. Otherwise, you're going to have a patchy rocker cover that I'm going to have to figure something else out with. But let's go. Paint stripper. Fun with chemicals. Let's go. All right, so here is the aftermath of our paint stripper. And then I also took to it with wire brush to get as much of the stuff off as I could. Uh, it's not gonna be perfect because these I think are made of magnesium, but like the metal itself is like a little bit just weird looking uh, underneath all the paint. I guess that's just what happens over the years of these being on hot cars or whatever. So we'll use some primer filler to fill out the uh, flat surfaces uh, as much as possible, especially the stuff that we're gonna see when the core pack cover's on, you still see a bunch of it. And then we're going to spray it. So I'm trying out this DNA. Uh, paint in a can. Uh, I've never used this stuff before but uh, I hear good things about their fancy paints and so this is silver with a metal flake that we spray on first as a base and then this is fuchsia candy colored paint so basically this will give you guys a little bit of a hint as to the color uh, we are going to be wrapping the car Although not completely, but it'll give you a little insight into it anyway. Feel free to throw a guess in the comments below as to what color or colors you think we're gonna be painting the car. Sorry, wrapping the car. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead, let's prime this thing up. And then I'm really keen to lay some of this stuff down and see how it looks. But this is gonna be like the centerpiece of our engine bay. So we really want it to look as good as possible. So let's do it. All right, so I had a bit of trouble with the paint uh, reacting. The stupid spray putty stuff that I thought I was doing a good thing with uh, ended up reacting for some reason with uh, the primer, which is real annoying. And then I got ahead of myself and started spraying this stuff, but go damn, because I fixed it up in the end. This stuff is such a vibe. So this is the silver metal flake like undercoat thing, but it looks so freaking cool and I don't even have the color laid down yet. And it also hides imperfections because sparkles are awesome like that, which is fantastic because our Valve cover is not perfect by any means. So, this stuff's mad, but like suss this out. And every layer you do, it gets like more and more sparkly. But come on, like, it's sparkly guys. It's so cool. All right, so that is all laid down. I'm super stoked with it. Now, moment of truth. Let's see what our color looks like. So this is transparent, which is means if I didn't buy that base coat, it would have just looked like this over primer, which would be a bit weird. Nervous moments. Make sure it's spraying all good. Got the thumb, of course. Man, this stuff is hectic. It's also dripping. Gotta be careful of that. I'm honestly having the worst luck with spray cans lately. So that spray can just didn't work. It was like pissing out paint under the cap, like everywhere. And so once again, I emptied the can into my spray gun and ended up painting the cover with the spray gun. Luckily I just had enough uh, in the can and it's looking pretty gangster. You can see the flake and the cover which is cool. So now we're gonna go ahead and lay clear down with the gun and that's basically gonna finish the whole look off. But that sparkle just looks so freaking good. So I'm starting to get pretty excited because I thought for a second uh, it wasn't going to come out, you know, good after the cans were giving me trouble, but we good. So let's lay down some clear. All the drama we just had with painting the cover doesn't matter because it looks 11 out of 10. 
way better than I thought it would come out, personally. But, here's our valve cover. Oh, look at that. So dope. I'm pumped on it. Looks awesome. The glitter is so good. Uh, in person, it just hides all uh, of the imperfections as well, so it just looks like a really nice valve cover now. Um, we've had a couple of splashes over here, as you can see, with the freaking can. Uh, but luckily, that's under the space where our beautiful, shiny coil pack cover goes, so that's not an issue at all, but just this part, especially being at the front of the motor, is so important, because that's what everyone sees when you pop the bonnet. So it looks pretty awesome, uh, and I'm very, very happy with that. Clearing with a gun, always, always makes things look amazing. Like, I've tried clearing with a can and you just can't get the, the depth of the, the shine out of a can, the gun, just instantly, it freaking looks so good. So, there's your tip of the day. So we're gonna let that dry overnight, but that means that we can come back and we can put our engine back together, some new gaskets, new drive belt, rocket cover, a new nice turbo manifold going on. Uh, and this thing should look absolutely schmick. She's looking a bit bare bones at the moment. So we'll come back tomorrow, same video, and uh, we'll get cracking on this M52, get it back into the engine bay. I'm so excited. Let's freaking go, see you in the morning. You bait. valve cover is dry and it looks freaking awesome. Very nice, very sparkly. Um, the clear did shrink back a little bit as it does. So what I think I'll do is I'm going to do a flow coat on it. So you just give it a nice, very fine wet sand, like 2000 grit wet sand, and then you do another clear coat on it. Nice thick one. And then I'll let it dry again. And then it should look really really shiny and super nice and that also just like flattens out some of the imperfections in it as well but even as it stands like it looks freaking rad uh, especially with next to the matte black turbo manifold it looks very cool also off screen i've done a bunch of uh things to get our engine bay and our motor ready to put in the hole which is what we're going to do right now so excited about but basically what we've done I have the brake booster and the pedal box in the car all bolted up properly, that's nice and solid. I painted our stock uh, metal clutch line black and P-clipped it back to the back of the firewall here, so it's just super nice and tidy. And that's ready to bolt into our gearbox. Over at the right hand side here, I deleted a huge bunch of wires that were no longer needed. Stuff for like ABS and just a bunch of other little things. And now that's just nice and tidy. Our two plugs where our engine loom plugs into, and that is it. And then of course, we need to make a bracket for our ECU here. Currently we're running still this KDFI Mega Squirt standalone ECU, which is plug and play on our engine. This thing has been absolutely flawless. Look at it. It's had a hard life, but it's never let me down, which is awesome. But I will be looking at some point to upgrade, I think hopefully to a link plug and play ECU. We won't be doing that for this round, obviously, because that uh, entails getting a full dyno tune and everything like that. And we are very limited on time. Um, but the engine bay is looking super good. Very, very tidy. I'm really pleased with the results. Uh, and now it's ready to accept our motor. So on the motor side, I went through, I tidied up, it doesn't really look like it, it's really hard to get this stuff like nice and tidy, but I tidied up and deleted a bunch of stuff in the engine loom under here, um, fixed up a couple of our, this is an inline uh, engine temperature sensor for our digital dash, so I just fixed up a couple of wires there, new heat shrink, um, and just went through and tidied some stuff up. I still need to tidy all of this loom here up for the engine, uh, but I'm not gonna do that until it's in the car because I obviously need to know like lengths and stuff and make sure we don't cut stuff too short and all that jazz. Uh, so we're gonna tidy that up. Once it's in the bay, the aim is to have this thing just looking really minimalistic, super tidy, um, you know, so that we're proud to pop our engine bay and have people look at our engine in the pits. So right now what we're gonna do, we've got our engine crane, which we usually don't have, but my boy was has kindly brought it to the factory and it lives here now, so I don't have to use the hoist anymore, yeah. which is nice. So we're gonna, yeah, very handy. We're gonna undo that, or we're gonna unfold it. We're gonna put the engine on it. Then we've got our ZF that I've just cleaned up outside. We're gonna bolt the clutch, the flywheel to the motor, put the gearbox on it, 
and slide it into this hole so by the end of this video we're going to have our motor sitting in the engine bay which is just massive it's also added a cup holder oh yeah i got a cup holder yeah it's perfect i don't even want to put suspension in my car anymore because that just fits so well but also we're open for business for fab work we are was fab he's got his like banner up there the was fab banner currently we've got a mark ii on the hoist we're doing a full exhaust on we had s15 in last week Full right. custom exhaust. Full custom stainless. Perfect. That was sick. TX stainless. Yep. We got a, it was got this brand new TIG welder here. This thing's freaking mental. It, it does a lot of things that his old TIG, uh, TIG welder did not do, uh, which means everything just looks much nicer, much That's, easier, yeah. much easier to work on. Makes you look good, yeah. Makes you look like you actually know what you're doing, son. Nah. My old welder was eight years old, so. Yes, and we kept the old welder for a backup. They're amazing, the technology just comes so far every year. It's yep, amazing. it's bloody good. What are we doing uh, in the shop? We do custom, we do exhaust, we do intercooler pump. Rear ends, collapsible rear ends. Everything. Gauges, yeah. Titanium exhaust, stainless exhaust. That's right. Uh, Where can we find you? Find us. Yeah. Wasfab on Instagram. Wasfab on Instagram, uh, Wasfab on Facebook, wasfab.com. We don't have the website yeah, live we'll yet. See. Or slide into my DMs, but we'll do anything. So intercooler piping as well, roll cages, the lot. Um, so hit us up. We can bring your car into the shop, and uh, we can we can build stuff for you. So it's pretty rad. It's very cool having was in the factory. We're having a good time. Uh, actually, next week we're going to upgrade the shop as well with another. We're going to extend out the mezzanine floor and do a bunch of stuff. So we're very busy people. But right now, let's get this engine onto the engine crane and let's freaking put it in the car. Look at this, oh, such an exciting moment. Slot her in. Slot her in, just chuck it in the hole, like a hot dog down a hallway. Let's go. moment the engine is in the hole best thing about the BMW is the whole front of the chassis comes off and you can just boom throw the engine in the front you only have to lift it like not even half a meter off the ground and it's just so good straight in thank you for your help was loves it so I put the gearbox mount on underneath as well so next up next episode I need to take care of this actually probably off off camera I won't film it I'll take care of this this loom and make it a bit tidier because it's so ugly. <laughs> you think it's ugly? It's ugly. I hate that yeah, I hate it too. <laughs> it sucks, but because we haven't gone full standalone loom, which is like out of my price range right now, um, I really want to get a wiring specialties loom. We will get one at some stage, um, but for this build. Because why? Because keep drifting affordable. Keep drifting affordable. That's right. I, I know. know. And burnout, it's quite expensive to get the, the wiring specialties loom, and for good reason because it's an amazing product. So we will get it, but. In, in good time, you know? So uh, I'm gonna tidy all that up, but I'm not gonna leave you guys high and dry. You've watched this far in the video, uh, you wanna see the valve cover and the turbo manifold on, so with a bit of YouTube magic, because I've gotta get uh, out of here and edit this video for you guys and do a bunch of other stuff, we're gonna do a three, two, one. Ready? Three, two, one. Woo! Look at that, fam. That's what I'm talking about. How good's the matte black turbo manifold as well? God, looks so good. Purple on the white looks amazing as I envisioned when we first started doing this all. So very happy with how this is coming together. Obviously it still looks a bit kind of messy at the moment. We've got a lot of tidying up to do, but hey, the engine's in the hole. And that means I will sleep much better tonight knowing that we've made this massive move on our project. Things are really progressing. I'm really happy with how this is coming together. Um, I don't know if I showed you guys. We've got our rivnuts and our hardware on this rear quarter 
just to kind of see how it was all going to come together. I've still got to put a piece of hardware here and here, but it looks so freaking tidy when you kind of start to put everything together, which is nice. Still have an insane amount of work to do on the body, but uh, you know, as you start putting things together and seeing the vision, the motivation just picks up and up and up. As it stands, we are 19 days away, which when I say that in person right now out loud is freaky as hell, but we're 19 days away from competing. So in 19 days, this car needs to look like a full car and be ready to go drifting. We need to be loaded up and on the trail and all that. It's very daunting, uh, but hey, we're gonna get it done because the best kind of motivation is a deadline that you have to meet. So a uh, couple of late nights coming up this week, but I'm pumped on the progress we made. This looks freaking phenomenal. That is the end of this episode because I have to go edit it to get it live for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I actually have some really cool ideas uh, for you guys to get on board with the sponsorship package for this car this year, but I'll announce them next week. I had the idea today, kind of stealing the idea from another YouTube channel uh, who I watch and love. So you guys should look out for that next week, but it just means you'll be able to be a part of the whole program this year, which is going to be awesome. But I'll announce that next week. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. I think like 70% 70, 70 of people who watch this channel are not subscribed. So imagine how big it would be if you did hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Might get two videos out this week if we're lucky, which would be cool. Cheers guys. Peace. Bye.